What is going on, everybody? It's the France, and we are here for a Monday Night Raw review for June this 14th, 2021. The night where disaster in the women's division strikes as Eva Marie makes her return to WWE television for a quote unquote match with Naomi. And we build fin the final time for Monday Night Raw for Hell in a Cell. Plus, RK Bro takes on a new day in what was a damn good tag team match. And basically, nothing else on this show so well, it was worth a damn. This show sucks. This show needs to be abolished. I cannot stand the fact that WWE thinks that we should really care. This show. Ugh. Just this show. Mm. I, I, I cannot stand the fact that they have even me back on this show. She brings up they bring up Piper Niven from NXT UK for this for her match tonight as her muscle. And WWE's commentators have to pretend like they don't know who the fuck she is. Now, it'd be one thing if Piper Niven, Viper, was brought from the Indies to Raw to be Eva Marie's muscle. But that's not the case. She's been on NXT UK for, what, two, three years? I guess NXT UK doesn't fucking matter. NXT UK, just bury it, why don't you? Holy shit. So... Alexa Bliss starts, her sh uh, starts the show. She shows us what happened last week. Says that she put Lily in time out. Basically saying, if that's the last time we see Lily and we don't see Lily ever again, I'll be happy. I'm sure anyone else would be happy because good fucking grief has that doll been the death nail to the women's division. So she's being all happy and whatever else and Nia Jack shows up. It says, cut the <coughs> Cut the crap. I don't know what you what your deal is. What happened to you? I knew you. We were friends. And Alexa Bliss is like, I was never we were never friends. And then Nia Jax uh, um challenges to a match. Nia Jax says and, um Alexa Bliss starts crying, like, I never meant to hurt anybody. Please forgive me. Then she starts laughing, is like, just kidding. Stands up, gets in Jack's face, and she accepts the match. So that is on later tonight. Charbon 9000 takes on Nikki Cross. Of course, Nikki Cross has been the purveyor of so much good luck over the last three weeks, beating both Charlotte and um, Rhea Ripley in Beat the Clock challenges. Well, not beating them, but like surviving. And then last week, her and Oscar won a tag team match because Charlotte and Rhea Ripley beat the hell out of each other. So the Charbon wants, still wants that loss. Stricken from her record. She kind of, she talks robotically about being the opportunity and all this other bullshit. And then we go to the match. Not two minutes into this match, here comes Rhea Ripley. So, how do you think this match is going to end? Was Charlotte going to lose by clean? Was she going to win clean? Or was she going to be distracted and lose by count out? That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Charlotte, Showbot 9000, was paying way too much attention to Rhea Ripley that she gets counted out. So Nikki Cross, for the third week in a row, or fourth week now, it's fourth week, fourth week in a row, has beat either Charlotte, Showbot or Rhea Ripley by count out or time limit draw. Or a time limit on a beat the clock, or just pinning them upright because their partner turned on them. So she's beaten Ray Ripley in the show bot twice each. Why don't you just throw into the triple threat match so she can take the pinfall? Because you know they don't want to have um, show, the show bot or Ray Ripley take the pinfall. Cross runs out of the ring. Flair, the show bot is charges after her. Flair levels her. The show bot levels her with a boot. She brings her back into the ring. Starts beating her up. She goes for the figure four. But Ripley turns, grab, runs in, grabs her from behind, drops her with the riptide. She stands tall. Show bot over the show bot with the title in the midair. Ripley leaves with her title taunting the show bot as she go, tries to cover on the mat. 
we see how Randy Orton was watched from ringside and Riddle lost his match against Kofi Kingston last week. Then we go backstage and Matt Riddle is talking to Jeff Hardy and he asks Jeff Hardy what's it mean, how to be a great time, how to make this tag team work. And Jeff Hardy, with the face, face pity he has on, is talking about how he's a successful tag team. He says you can't believe um, he's like, you know, trust is like he just has this deadpan stare off into the distance with the space pen on. It's like trust is key. You have to trust each other because if you don't, then the tag team's going to fall apart. And he can't believe he's saying this, but you need to listen to Randy Orton. He has a match with John Morrison. Matt Riddle starts taunting and ranting about nothing. Hardy disappears out of nowhere. Randy Orton appears and apologizes for last week. He promises he won't let Orton down tonight. Orton tells them to be himself tonight. Whatever that means and not another Randy Orton. Ask if that means Orton likes him. Orton says no and walks off. <coughs> so we go to John Morrison versus Jeff Hardy. Now, 10 years ago, this would have been an excellent match. This would have been a match to look forward to. Two of the great... Two High flyers, two guys who can go in there and give you one hell of a match. And that was 10 years ago. Evan when like Jeff Hardy is one of those guys who honestly needs to disappear and not be used again because he's just he's just bleh. He's slow, he's definitely somebody who they just I don't want to. I don't want to be like that guy, but like seriously, the dude has pretty much in his old age with how much he's wrecked his body. I'm surprised he's able to still even wrestle. So we have this match here. Morrison wins in about three minutes. Starship pain. After the match, Morrison until Cedric takes the mic at ringside, yelling at Hardy. He apologized for not showing Jeff respect he deserves as a legend last week. He idolized Hardy. Cedric went on and back and watched the match and saw how Jeff showed him, showed up, showed him up and disrespected him. He saw, saw he saw how Hardy was nothing but a sore winner. He's only a sorry he couldn't kick Hardy's ass disrespectful ass into retirement. Jeff says, "Well, you know what? I will retire if you can beat me in a match right now." So, Cedric agrees. I mean, hell, why not try and retire one of the greatest tag team wrestlers of all time? So, Jeff Hardy took on Cedric Alexander. And same, um, different verse, same as the first. Jeff Hardy beats him. After Cedric had Jeff down, he goes up top. He taunts him, tries to do a swanton. Jeff gets at, miss it, moves out of the way. Hardy goes back up top, hits Swanton for the pin, and avoids a tight retirement. Now, okay then. Cedric Alexander is no, like, um, young up-and-coming. He's been around for a while. But why, oh why, are we going to sit here and pretend that this is a good thing? That they're just pushing... The, the, this is the push for Cedric Alexander... Losing time and time again to Shelton Benjamin only to beat him because you raked him because you poked him in the eye and rolled him up and now back to back matches against Jeff Hardy, you lose? Tell me again why any of us should care about Cedric Alexander. I mean, don't get me wrong, Cedric Alexander is a hell of a worker. And when he was rocketed in the cruiserweight division, he had some great fucking matches. His time in the hurt business was great. That was another mistake. Again, that was a mistake everyone agrees. WWE shouldn't have made, but what can you do? So, Cedric again loses, even though he could have retired Jeff Hardy. Mm. Chocolate milkshake, good stuff. So, we get a video package of the events that led to Drew McIntyre versus WWE Champion Bobby Lashley. And then it was time. It was time. Naomi comes to the ring. We go to commercial. We come back. Here comes... Eva Marie, followed by NXT superstar Piper Niven. Niven rushes the ring. Eva walks behind her. Niven is stepping up, telling the referee she was, she said, start the match. The bell rings. She beats the hell out of Naomi. And the whole time, 
Who is this young lady? Who is she? Who is she? How are we like? I really like to know who this young lady was. I mean, if you would have watched NXT UK, I don't know, maybe last week or the week before that, you would know who the fuck it is. Hits a big splash off the ropes. Goes for the delivers a Michinoku driver. One, two, three. After the match, um, the ring announcer is like, "Here's your winner," and then stops. Then Eva Marie grabs the mic and says, "Here's your winner, Eva Marie." What an absolute fucking joke! You brought you you for weeks and weeks and weeks have hyped this woman up, even though everyone knows she is fucking pathetic in the ring. Only to bring in somebody that people actually give a damn about to be her muscle and wrestle her matches for her. This was horrendous. I want to see more for Piper Niven that's not tied to... Like, that isn't tied to this piece of garbage known as Eva Marie. Like, are you fucking for real, people? Give me a fucking break. So, it's Piper Niven who has no name. After that, Piper, of course, um, I'm sorry, Miss No Name, Miss Young Lady, that they don't know what her name is, just celebrates around Eva Marie, and Eva Marie just, yeah, whatever, nobody cares. Talk about bait and switch bom- bombing. Nobody wants to see Eva Marie. Even WWE officials, if, here's the thing. If WWE actually had faith in Eva Marie in the ring, do you think they would need to call up Piper Niven to do her dirty work and work with her? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But this is what WWE likes to do. They they they, they pretty much brought Eva Marie in so she could trend, so people would talk about her. Trying to probably see if they can have that talking to rub off on Piper Niven. Giving Piper Niven a good rub. So when they do split, people are cheering for Piper Niven. Well, here's the fucking problem. Why won't you have them call her by her name? Why do we have to pretend like she doesn't have a goddamn name? What in the hell was that? What an absolute joke. It's like, I'm fine if you want it to be the way you're doing it, but it's like, don't, don't, don't even think about just being like, oh, well, we don't know who this is. Like, how are we supposed to know who this is? She's a mystery. Do you guys not watch the NXT UK? Do you not? I mean, I don't watch NXT UK. Who doesn't want? Apparently, nobody watches NXT UK because nobody on this fucking roster knows who the fuck Piper Niven is. I mean, for fuck's sake. They even had, um, who was it? Tamina tweet out, who's this? Like, just the blatant disrespect. Ugh, I, I couldn't even put this company. But, yeah, there you go. Eva Marie is now being winning matches without even having to wrestle. Just shows you how much faith WWE has in her. Which is none. So, Mandy Rose and Zayna Brooke are backstage doing a photo shoot earlier in the day. They were bothered by women's tag team champions. Natalia and Tamina training in the ring. Rose and Brooke asked if they can keep the noise down. Natalia and Tamina knocked them for way more of the looks than their in-ring skill. Dana Brooke, I think it was, on, I think it was Mandy Rose said, if it wasn't for their last names, they would the those opp- all the opportunities they would have would have shut on them years ago, which is absolutely true for Tamina. I mean, if if Tamina didn't, if Tamina wasn't a snooker, and she was just some random woman on the street, or random a, a random woman who came in to try out for WWE, she would have been out of WWE years ago. The only reason she really has been kept around is because her last name and the fact that she has some kind of relation to The Rock, plain and simple. So. Let's see here. New Day versus RK, bro. This was awesome. I've been waiting for this match. I was wondering if they were going to have it at Hell in a Cell. But this was great. This was really good. Kofi Kingston and Xavier Woods are always great. Matt Riddle is great in the ring. I can't stand doing... I can't listen to his promos backstage because they just... They're just not good. 
But yeah. This was awesome. But before that, Drew McIntyre was interviewed by Kevin Patrick. He is hyped up and confident about challenging WWE champion Bobby Lashley in Hell in a Cell. Basically, it is, as you know, at Hell in a Cell. If Drew McIntyre cannot win the WWE Championship, his time facing Drew Bobby Lashley, he cannot challenge for the WWE Championship as long as Bobby Lashley is the champion. So... We had this match here. Really good match. All four guys. Wait, Randy Orton is... We all know how Randy Orton is. It's the tale of two Randys. If Randy Orton gives a, gives a damn about the product, like what he's doing, he's going to go out there. He's going to show out and show off and show everybody that he is one of the best damn workers in professional wrestling. If he doesn't give a damn about... If he's just putting something in you... You can just tell him walking out in his body language that he doesn't give a damn. Then he's going to go out there and he's going to just shit the bed and do, go through the motions and not give a damn. Thankfully, I mean, you can definitely tell Randy Orton is, is the guy who is pushed to work with Matt Riddle. Because this, this honestly feels like it screams to me. That if it wasn't for the fact that he, like, if he wasn't the one who wanted to work with Randy and Vince came to him is like, ah, oh, we're just going to put you with Matt Riddle. And Randy didn't want to do that, but he's like, fine, just because he's a team player. Then the matches that we've seen Randy have working with the New Day, I'm sure everybody likes to work with the New Day. And it's just, you can see the teammate chemistry between Matt Riddle and Randy Orton is improving week by week. It's gonna it's gonna suck when it breaks when they break them up. I would say around SummerSlam, I would I, w I would keep this together. And if you're gonna do a big blow a big match between these two, keep it to SummerSlam. I know we had um, these two have a match a couple weeks ago, which is what Lance started all this, and Matt Riddle got the win. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see what they do for this going forward. But again, really good match here. Just Kofi, like Randy Orton being Randy Orton. Kofi, um, there was a there was a spot in this that was like real easy to remember. Kofi um, goes for something, he misses. Rand, uh, Matt uh, Matt Riddle hits him with, I believe it was a floating bro or something like that. Xavier Woods goes to break up the pinfall. Randy Orton jumps into the ring and pounces Xavier Woods so fucking hard, or he took the bump so well that he goes. He's he's pretty much in the next week. Holy shit, was that a move? I mean, someone on, on social media was like, he just did Keith Lee's move because snakes don't pounce. By the way, we're still working on that AB, ABP for um, Keith Lee's whereabouts because we haven't seen him in months. Riddle blocks another double team and rocks Kofi with a knee to send him out to the ring. Riddle takes Woods in the corner on his shoulders. Orton tags in, but Woods doesn't see it. Woods still blocks the okay out of nowhere. Woods and Orton go at it. Woods goes for the honor roll. This was just mwah, chef's kiss. When it comes to a finish. He goes for the honor roll. RKO out of nowhere. One, two, three. Boom. Matt Riddle and RK bro. Matt Riddle and Randy Orton get the win. Just holy shit. I didn't see that coming. But what a way to get those guys a win. So I'm liking RK bro. I know a lot of people like I know a lot of people weren't really keen. On it, and you can definitely tell that Randy Orton is putting all his effort into this. Because again, as we know, Randy Orton ain't gonna put his. Uh, Randy Orton, this wouldn't last as long as it had if Randy Orton didn't want to do this. Plain and simple. So we go to, we see what happened between Nikki Cross, Charlotte, I'm sure about 9000, Ray Ripley. So she was back with Ripley. She knocks Flair for worrying about her ego instead of the title match. Talks about beating the Charlotte Bot and Helen Sell and telling Shiva to get out of her face so she can be ready for her match with Oscar. And that's where we go. We go to Oscar versus Rhea Ripley. Now, yes, I would have been. I even put this on minds. If I would have been excited about this match, Rhea Ripley, Oscar, women, um, non-title match. If a, we haven't seen this. I think multiple times already. B, the character assassination of Rhea Ripley. She is a shell of her former self, and she's only been on Monday Night Raw for less than a year. And C, just all the terrible fucking promos. It's like, just everything about this has been terrible. 
Just the WWE's booking decisions. Rhea Ripley. Just do not let Rhea Ripley talk. If anybody could use a manager on Monday Night Raw, it's the current Raw Women's Champion. Because my goodness, she wasn't that great of a talker in NXT. Let's be real. You're not. You're not gonna go. You're not gonna find a promo in NXT from Rhea Ripley or NXT UK that's gonna be blow away. It's just not gonna happen. So please stop letting this woman talk. Get her a manager. Get her somebody to talk for her because she needs that. So it's like, you know, Ray Ripley's going into a title match on Monday, on Sunday, and I even put this out there too. One or two things is going to happen. One, Ray Ripley is going to win this match clean. Charlotte will attack after. Or B, Charlotte Flair is going to get revenge, distracting Ray Ripley, allowing Oscar to win. Which, either one of those is fucking wrong. But of course, WWE and their creativity can't think of a way to get out of this. Oscar should not be losing clean. Ever. Oscar should be one of the ones that you protect. And have as a threat anytime she time she comes around. Unfortunately, that is not the case for Oscar right now. Oscar, of course, loses clean as a whistle. So, Oscar with a big kick to the chest and more stiff kicks as Ripley is on her knees. Ripley catches and kicks and a kick and delivers his knees strikes to the face. Ripley with the, with a stiff warm catches a hip attack and block and blocks a roll up. Oscar breaks out of the prism trap submission. Oscar goes for the Oscar lock now, but it's blocked and as they tangle in the middle of the ring, some more back and forth. Ripley catches Oscar with the riptide in the middle of the ring for the one, two, three. And then um Charlotte with in one of the ugliest looking attires I think I've ever seen anybody wear. She has she's giving Seth Rollins a run for his money on the drip. They, she comes in, they fight, they brawl. Sean DeVore, Adam Pierce, Shane Holmes, and Jamie Noble, other officials, and had to come out to try and stop them. They couldn't do it. They couldn't do shit for a good portion of this. And then they finally were able to pull them apart. Charlotte, the showbot gets pulled away. And then um, she tries to come back in. She gets kicked in the face. And that is that. So, and she's leaking a little bit of oil. There's a little bit of she, there's a little bit of leaking coming out of her. Ripley tops her. The show about seizes on the seize seize seize. I can't say it on the ramp and promises to kick Ripley's ass on Sunday. I'm going to kick your ass. We see MVP and we see MVP and Bobby Lashley with his fa- with his hoe train. I'm going to call it that. It's a hoe train. Drinking champagne and dancing with with the with the women, or the women are dancing, whatever. Kevin Patrick walks in and asks Lashley about his Helen. So MVP yells at him to stop ridiculing and ridicules him for interrupting the fun and not knocking, and he seems to address him as the Almighty Bobby Lashley from now on. Uh. Lashley brings up McIntyre early comparison to William Wallace. Lashley likes the comparison because Drew has committed a capital offense on Sunday. He will publicly execute him to mount his head on a shtick. Alexa Bliss versus Nia Jax. If it wasn't that we had Eva Marie back, we had to see Alexa Bliss and Nia Jax in a match. Good fucking grief. The match, nobody cared about it. Jax gets um, ragdolls her for a bit. Bliss fights her a bit. She goes for the, she hits Twisted Bliss. Reginald popped up out of nowhere. And she goes to she hits Twisted Bliss. Goes for the pin, but Reginald runs in, pulls her out of off of that for disqualification. Reginald pleads that Bliss stares at him down and backs in towards the corner. She stares at him like a crazy wooden woman. And now we're getting the mirror game. There he's in a trance. He his head's following her head. She starts to raise her hand. He does the same thing. But she bails before Nia Jax does anything. And he pops out of it. So it looks like Reginald is going to be Alexa's next puppet. Good grief. And apparently Alexa Bliss is going to be facing Shayna Baszler at Hell in a Cell. Good grief. Wonder how long it's going to take for them when they get back to real fans and real people. Which... News going out is that WWE is lagging. Outside of the first few um, shows that they're at, WWE is lagging behind AEW in many markets. 
That's sad. Because AEW is doing mostly small venues. WWE is getting the big venues. And WWE. And it's, it's funny how they always they have Corey Graves and other announcers like, we're just as excited to get back on the road and be in front of you just as much as you guys are, as much as the fans are. And it's like, not according to your ticket sales. Apparently, nobody's excited for, AEW, for WWE to come back on the road. Nobody cares about WWE going back on the road. Uh, MVP of choice is Kofi Kingston in the locker room. Kofi asked him what he wants. MVP wants to know if Kofi thought about what they said last week. He goes on tonight, loss with RK Bro, and says Kofi Mane is gone and never coming back. Tells Kofi to look to if you look, want to blame anybody, just look to your left as Woods is standing to his left. MVP goes on and says Kofi didn't even get pinned tonight and he's still a loser. Woods knocks MVP and Kofi and tells him to keep moving unless he wants to be lose his teeth or be walking here with two canes and not one. MVP and Kofi uh, knocks. Uh, I'm sorry. MVP, Ko- he keeps telling MVP how he feels and says he owes his success and support for his family and friends in WWE, and nothing will change that. He says, "Well, good luck to you ma- with your match on Sunday." And Helen says, "Oh, that's right. You don't have a match." And <clears throat> tells him to think about what he said. So MVP is looking to be the man to finally dissolve the New Day completely. Will he be successful? Probably not. WWE, I, I, I think the New I, honestly, in my opinion, I feel like the New Day has gone as far as they can go. I think it's time to end it. Of course, KV Kingston is somebody who's going to be found, like, Big E, they're trying to do this thing, and it's not working out on SmackDown. They just can't, they axed Aleister Black, so that whole thing wasn't going anywhere. And now, Co- now Big E just looks lost in the shuffle behind with a lot of the guys going for the Intercontinental title, which isn't bad being somebody who could be fighting for the Intercontinental title. But a lot of people have been calling for him to be the next one of the guys to for Roman Reigns to kill, pretty much. Or be the guy to beat Roman Reigns, which isn't going to fucking happen. I don't think Roman loses the championship until next year at SummerSlam. Just saying. But, yeah. If, here's the thing. If... They kill the New Day. If Kofi Kingston is finally broken away from Xavier Woods, after a mini feud, if they do that between Xavier Woods and Kofi Kingston, which you know that's probably what they'll do, Kofi will probably be used. Xavier Woods will be lost in the shuffle, back in catering with everybody else. Probably seen more on Up Up Down Down than on WWE television if they break up the New Day, which who knows what they're going to fucking do. Elias versus Jackson Riker, again, same as last week. Riker pretty much beats the shit out of Elias. Elias leaves like a pussy little bitch. And that is that. Yeah, WWE is still trying to get people to love Jackson Riker. There are too many lunatics on WWE, like in WWE's fan base, to actually give a shit about. Um. Jackson Riker, too many lunatics who, you know, are anti-American, anti-patriotic um, and stuff. Yeah, no. Just, um, yeah, I don't know. So, as we continue on here, Drew McIntyre versus Raw Tag Team Champion AJ Styles. So, we had AJ and Drew in the ring. We've seen this match before. Nothing special about this match. But Bobby Lashley and his hoes are sitting, I'm sorry, his exotic dancers are sitting up at the ramp. And as AJ and Omos are making their entrance, Omos is standing there in between the two couches and the ladies want to just, they want to look in awe at Omos. AJ pulls, gets Omos to get away and I'm like, dude, you're cock blocking your own tag team partner, what's wrong with you? Omos, Omos looking to get 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 some get get some luck tonight, and AJ's like, no 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 man, you gotta be watching my back. So this match it goes this 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 match started at like ten thirty nine or ten twenty. Like it was actually like no, it was actually like ten twenty eight or twenty nine. Ten twenty nine. I'm like, there's no fucking way this is the fun, the, the the main event of the mat, of the show. There's way too much time. They're not gonna give these guys about 30 minutes. Just no way. 
Turns out, that's right. The guys had the match. AJ, um, Drew looked like he had the match won. He taunts Bobby Lash to the point where Bobby Lashley runs down, looks like he's going to get involved when the Viking Raiders music hits. They come out because they have a number one contendership to the WWE Raw Tag Team titles, which has not been made for Hell in a Cell for whatever goddamn reason. So, you think, we go to commercial break, we come back, and it's like, I th- we go to commercial break, and you think, oh, they're going to do this bullshit where we're going to have a six-man tag match at the pay-per-view. Oh, not at the pay-per-view, but tonight. And you think for a minute, oh, thankfully that didn't happen because you're there and the match hasn't, and the match is still going on. And then, of course, Bobby Lashley gets, um, Drew McIntyre attacks Bobby Lashley, which prompts Bobby Lashley to come in and get a match, the deep match DQ'd. So, the Viking Raiders come in, they brawl with Bobby Lashley, they send him to the outside, belly to match suplex, and, yeah, this ends up being, as you figured, a six-man tag match. Which, I am so tired. So tired of this same boring, drawn-out, well, we have three, we have six people here. We need to do a six-man tag match. A six-man tag match over... Ah. Come on, man. No. Just no. Give me something else. Or, oh, we have four people out here. We need to do a tag team match. Don't do this. Give me something else, man. Give me something else. Well, it all comes down. Andrew McIntyre pins the WWE champion. You know, the WWE... Well, what happened was AJ, pretty much dead tired from getting his ass kicked, goes to tag in Omos. He falls down before he can tag Omos. He gets enough strength to tag in Bobby Lashley. Bobby Lashley is surprised about this. Eats a Claymore kick. One, two, three. Bobby Lashley, the WWE champion, gets pinned six nights from WrestleMania, from, from Hell on a Cell. Tells you all you need to know about the match on Sunday. So, that is Monday Night Raw. This shit fucking sucks. This shit is just terrible. I don't know why WWE thinks that we that we should have to suffer through the same bullshit week in and week out. Do something else. Like, just stop with the bullshit already. Book better shows. Nobody wants to hear any of this shit. Like, nobody. Nobody wants to hear this shit. Nobody wants to watch this. Your ratings... Basically, the only people watching... There's no casuals watching. Are you kidding me? The thing that you... Like, when it comes to professional wrestling and WWE and other things like this, other mediums too, you don't cater to the hardcores because the hardcores are going to watch no matter fucking what. You cater to try and get the those casuals in. The people who aren't keen on watching professional wrestling but they change the channel, they're flipping through the channels, they see Monday Night Raw and they see something that might pique their interest and they end up continuing to watch after that. That shit's not happening here. WWE is so bad that like people just... Keep flipping through. They might look at. They might see Roth like half a second. See a fucking doll, being a, a, a grown ass badass woman running for their life from a doll last week, and be like, "What the fuck is this shit?" Change. And now you're turning off the casuals. I will celebrate, and I probably shouldn't say that, but I will celebrate the day, the night, the week that WWE Monday Night Raw. Ratings come in, and they're under a million because it's going to happen eventually. Every single year, the ratings continue to fall further and further and further down. And I will be just ecstatic that WWE ratings suffer so badly. Because something needs to change. I know Vince McMahon doesn't care. Like, they're not in... 
the, the, the like they're in the sports entertainment business. They're not looking to make quality shows. They're just here to make content. Content that is usually shitty. Who cares? It's like it's pretty much them. It's like who cares how good the show is? Because as long as we have that three hours of Monday Night Raw, as long as we go start to finish with the three hours of Monday Night Raw, then we're fine. And that's shitty as fuck. But this show just... You can see why more and more people are not doing reviews. Brian Zane doesn't do his review anymore. That's um, um, his buddy who does it now. It's just so ridiculous. Like, WWE needs to get better. It needs to get better quick. But that is your Monday Night Raw review. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video. Find me on Minds at the France Club. Find me on twitch.tv slash the France Club. And find me on Instagram at the France Club. And I will see you guys on Friday for a triple header of Raw, of SmackDown, Friday night on a, um, AEW, and a Hell in a Cell prediction show. Until then, my name is the France, and I'll see you guys later.